so once again welcome all of you guys who have joined and have been there with uh, with us since the beginning of algo gyan sessions so uh, today we are going to cover a topic uh, which is actually extremely unique and as far as i know this is the only platform algorand is the only platform which supports that right so what exactly are we going to do today uh, let me just explain something i'll just share my screen not a very big ppt and all but just to have a look at what we are talking uh, give me a moment so uh, mudassir can you see the screen yes yes yeah. so now as usual mudassir it's a it's a fire chat between us so today also i'm going to put you in that uh, hot seat of kbc <laughs> yeah so, sure sure <laughs> <laughs> what exactly can you do if you are or let me ask a different question what is the chink in the blockchain arbor what is the change what is the chink chink that means what is the most important problem or mo only you can say single point of failure you have to store the, your phrase key or uh, your private key basically private key so private key is one of the i mean that is the only chink in the armor of blockchain other than that blockchain is pretty much safe so, yeah now there are two options to that one you lost your private key now if you do that if any platform supports that sort of behavior that you reissue the private key in cases of you lost then it will kill the entire idea of decentralization would you agree to that yes i agree why because then it, it is it becomes web 2.0 where you can just for click on forgot password and maybe your email id or phone number is registered and you get an otp and you can that have means they have stored your uh, data basically yes but over here we are not taking your mobile number email id or anything else so rekeying is not an option in terms of regenerating the key is not an option so if you lost you lost but then there is one more case and the other case is very crucial because lost private key is a separate story altogether and there are not many incidents happened during a during somebody's like somebody by mistake lost their private key and all but the other things which keep on happening is your private key is compromised like a popular platform i'll not take the name but a very very popular platform somehow their update revealed the private keys of users and for the half of or more than half of a day the entire platform stopped all their transactions so that they can recover whatever was stolen or they can put a pause on that but the point is it was compromised now mudassir if your private key gets compromised what what is the i mean what do you think what can happen basically all your assets your uh, cryptocurrencies can be stolen okay your cryptocurrencies can be stolen okay but is there a possibility that the person who has my private key right now and being because i am the actual owner can we both use the same private key yeah yeah definitely yes why because there is no other private key right yeah so we can use the same mnemonic phrase private key whatever you want to call that but basically we can do that right so what happens do you you know you know, you haven't not you have not lost the private key but your private key is compromised now in that condition no no not a single blockchain platform has any sort of uh, customer care center where you can go and ask that okay uh, so and so something some transaction or some fraudulent transactions happen and my private key is compromised so issue a, issue a new one or something like that because there is no call center because there is no other key it is just one key and if it is compromised as a separate problem altogether then in that case because the key is unique and it can be utilized by any number of people what you can do is you can transfer or you can divert the account to a newer account so let's say hypothetically account 1 is my account and account 2 is mudassir's account or both are my accounts account 1 and account 2 both are my accounts somehow my private key for account 1 is compromised and now mudassir has the private key mudassir i am making you a villain so don't mind mudassir <laughs> yeah. has a 
Mudasir has my private key. So Mudasir started to, because he knew that the moment I'll transfer or he will transfer a bigger amount, I will know. So he started to transfer slower amounts or slower, you can say, or lower values, lower values. But as soon as he transferred, I got a notification because I am completely having an event-based system. So whenever a, a something, something happens with my transaction or my wallet, I get to know. So what happened over there? Then I, I immediately realized that my private key is compromised. Now, who is using it? No idea. But I, I'm just aware that my private key is compromised. Now, Mudasir is aware that account one, he has now the private key of account one. So what I'll do is I'll rekey. That means I will migrate the private key from account one to account two. Now, account two is not known to anyone. But now from that moment onwards, all the account one transaction can be signed by account two private key. So that means Mudasir cannot do anything even if he has my private key. So you can stop all the transactions without losing your original account. That's a completely a unique and extraordinary thing. Why? Because in most of the cases, when you lost your private key, your account is permanently lost, you have to create a new one. So if you are blockchain, uh, whatever, whoever the guy or whatever platform is, if they are okay or they have this uh, off-chain version of they can uh, access from the uh, from the explorer and all, and they can reread the blocks to find out the transaction related to your account, maybe you are able to do that. But all the blockchain platforms don't do that. All the exchanges do that, not the blockchain platforms, right? So in that, in 99% of cases, you will lose your account forever. And that is a complete challenge. So in that case over here, we are or Algorand has added a layer of security for you that if you know that your account private key is compromised, you can transfer that transaction of account one to account two in a way that then the account, the key of account two can be utilized to sign the account one transactions. So that your though your account one private key is compromised, Mudasir will not be able to use my private key. Clear, Mudasir? Yes, sir. Now let us take a look at how that works. Okay. So as yes, usual, I'll go important. to my pardon? Yeah, I'm saying that's the important part, how it works. Yeah, that's an important part. So I'll start over here. I'll go to my codes. What happened over here? Okay, let me start a newer one. Terminal. And I'll go to my folder CD codes. And over here, I'll do that. I'll go kit. Init. And we are going to have the playground scaffolding uh, project. Over here, I'll do that. I'll go Kyan. And this is we are doing rekey. So let's wait till the time the project rendering and the GitHub and everything happens. So now we have opened the file. So as usual, we'll go to a playground, we'll go to hello world, and we'll go to a demo.p. Right? So this is the one we are always using since the beginning. Now all these things, all these particular code, this particular two, three lines of code where we are deploying the Hello Beaker app. I'm not interested into that part right now. So I can just, okay, let us keep it. Let us not delete anything for now. Let us keep it as it is. Let us save this one. Let us see whether this works or not. So what we can we do? We'll go to run. Let us start debugging. Because my desktop, uh, my Docker desktop is running, I'll be able to see the code over here in a while. Yeah, hello Beaker, and we are good to go. App ID is 1139. Why? Because we are working on sandbox and back. So app ID is a very lower now. Clear? But now our code begins. That how are we going to use this rekeying? But before that, what what is the thing over here is we are creating an account or we are getting an account from here. But what do we exactly need? We need that which is this account which is being used, right? So what I'll do is 
I'll print the account address also. How do I do that? I can just utilize this one print account dot address. Yeah, and we are good to go. So I'll get to know that which is the wallet address being used by this particular code right now. Right. So I'll do that. I'll run the code. Because we need two accounts, I need to know which account key is already being utilized by the code. Okay, this 3W2S6, this is the wallet address which we are using right now. So what I'll do over here, I'll go over here, I'll go kit, whole account list. And this will give me the three wallet addresses generated by my uh, sandbox. So what is the address 3W2, which is, this is the address which is being currently used. So we can use either of these two, either CYR4 or this LAY and 6 right? Now I need the, the mnemonic also. So I'll do that, I'll go kit, just to have the second account. So I'll go kit, then again, bowl, account, then I'll use export, hyphen, hyphen, ADDR, hopefully, I am writing a right command. Let's enter. No, it's unknown flag. So, okay, let just give me a moment. What did I miss over here is, yeah, okay, it is address and not ADDR. So I just missed this one. Yeah, so we are now, we have received this particular item, right? Uh, that is code we need. Mnemonic. Now I'll go to my account, my dev, dev, hello world or demo.py. And over here, we can, we know that this account right now is being generated directly from the Algodi client. But this, the newer account, I'm going to generate account one equals to again, I'll go kit utils dot. When you put a dot over there, you will see that get account from mnemonic or is also there as a function. And once you do that, in the bracket, you can pass the name, right? Within the curly, uh, the door, the quotes, and we are good to go. So now we have two accounts. One is account, and the other one is your account one, right? So we are good to go. Now. The app client is already created for us. We know that the account is already pointing towards this particular 4001. That is your local host uh, link for what? Algodi. And right, rest of the things we have already done that, the create response, that means basically we are uploading the hello world app and then we are calling, that, right? So technically speaking, we have added what we need. Now as a first step, what will I do? I'll need a rekeying transaction, right? So I'll go to where, I'll go to my previous code, which I've already done. And over here, I'll copy our first transaction. Or let us copy this one also. Right now over here, again, you are seeing algo SDK is not defined, something like that. Over here, we have not done that. So we can utilize import algo SDK and we are good to go. Right. So over here, it is not able to find out the second address. So I'll just be there. Over here, I'm creating a rekeying transaction. So we know that we have been creating the transaction since last couple of sessions. So over here also, there is a payment transaction. Again, sender, the first account, which is sending. Then we know that there are certain parameters we need to add. So we have added that SP parameters. Then receiver is also the same account, same uh, wallet address. Amount zero because we are not transferring anything. It, we are just rekeying. Over here, it is looking for the second address. So what can I do? I'll just have account one. Right, so that's fine. Account one dot address. And we are good to go. 
So ultimately, what we have done, we have created a very simple transaction where we are not transferring any money. Both sender and receiver is the same account, but we have added one more, uh, you can say, variable or one more parameter, which is now telling us the second wallet address. So if you expand this one, you will get the entire that what this particular payment transaction class is requiring. So over here, till this particular time, it is mandatory or this particular step, it is mandatory. From here, it is not mandatory. You can see that any or none, any or none, any or none, any or none. That means either you can provide or you don't. Doesn't matter. Clear? So this is a transaction which is going to initiate your rekey. Now over here, we know that we need to sign the transaction also. So we have signed the transaction using the same private key. From which private key? Account. The original account private key. Then we are registering the transaction and we are printing that, okay, what is the transaction? Waiting for confirmation we are doing. And then at what particular round our transaction got confirmed that we are, we are printing that. Clear? So over here, what happens in this particular transaction? This particular transaction, basically, we are rekeying the entire thing. What account one's wallet uh, private key is now transferred to account or basically account private key is now transferred to account. Clear? Mudasir, any doubt till this uh, step? No, no, it's clear. All right. Now, we want to know that whether whatever we have done is correct or not i mean how will we check whether this is correct or not right so let us do something else over here. now i'll copy this one one more time this other code and this code we are saying that account lost the private key so the transaction will be rejected so what happens over here we are doing that sander account Again, from account, we are receiver account is the second. We are sending to the second address. We are using the same thing. Amount is still zero. But over here, we can see that we are creating a transaction where we are signing the transaction using the first account's private key. And we have put that into try catch block. So try block, we are trying to get the transaction ID. And if it is not giving us the ID, we want to see the error to this particular transaction ID. So first of all, what we did, we rekeyed the first account to a different account altogether. And then we create, we tried to create a transaction using the first account's private key. Clear? Now let us run. So let me just save the file. And then I believe this hello method and this we don't require. So I can just delete that code. We can have only code which is required. So first of all, just we have we are creating an algo client where we are uh, pointing towards your algo D node, and the rest of the code is pretty much the same one. So I'm saving the file. I'm going to run and start debugging. Let's see what we are getting as a result. Okay, so you can see that there is an error. So Mudasir, was this error expected or I made a mistake? Uh, I think it's expected because you have yeah. signed from the... Yes. Yeah. So this is the error which was expected error. So let me just copy this error and showcase to you what is this error. All right. So let me open up a new Word document. Let us copy the error over here. Let me just increase the font size so everybody can read. Now, guys, just take a look at the error. Transaction pool, remember, transaction sum ID should have been authorized by this one, but was actually authorized by this address. That means this is your second wallet address, right? Or basically your account one. So the transaction was expecting that this particular transaction was supposed to be signed by this key or this particular account's private key, CYR4. But it was actually authorized by this. This is your basically your original wallet address. And that's why we are getting the error. Why? Because now account, account private key now belongs to account one. So no matter the transaction or the initiation or the transaction was initiated by account itself, 
over here we can see that the transaction is sender address is account address not account one still it is giving you an error when you try to sign the account with the private key of first account. so now what we have done let's say mudassir has my private key and i immediately registered this transaction so though mudassir have my private key he will not be able to sign the transactions why because that now that particular transaction or private key is now pointing towards a different wallet address right so now i am safe clear guys any doubts anybody mudassir no no it's clear all right so now let us save this file and let us try if we can get the actual transaction back right so what we can do we can see you know we have to see that whether i am saying is right or wrong so what we can do instead of this one i can write just a simple code over here account 1 private key and let's see whether this works or not let's see without adding that newer code let's see whether i am saying is right or wrong so run start debugging no we are getting an error somewhere should have been authorized no it is still the same error right so over here we have to do that thing again let's see if somebody has a message yeah okay thank you mudassir for that message i think we have to check the second code so second code what does it say let's see that so second code says that expected or signed expected error transaction this one and expect this particular transaction to sign and again the same thing but over here we are just printing the result as it is but then it generated an error somewhere else why because it did not reach to the try block so mudassir can you tell me what is wrong why it generated an error somewhere else anybody because it has it is supposed to generate a uh, let me delete this one also because you think that i might have tweaked the code that's why it is working i have deleted the code and if i run this code it will still generate an error while it is supposed to produce an error on the console it is giving an error right in the code itself that means it is an uncaught error so guys the private key of account is now migrated that means the rekeying also will not work rekeying this particular transaction also will not work because that is also signed by account private key so what i can do that i can just comment this codes and we are good to go right so then this is the second transaction we are trying to do and i am saying that this is i am trying to write using the account one private key right and let me save this one because there is not a single transaction now being signed from the account itself so every so the second transaction which we are expecting to fail is now uh, getting signed by the first account private key. now we can print these also so print uh, in the bracket and dx id so that's okay we can print this transaction id let's run this code actually this is a bit confusing because uh, account 1 is actually the second account right and yep the account is account 1 yes <laughs> uh, but okay let me do that let me let me change that one so it is yeah. doesn't have any confusion this is your account 1 this is your account 2 over here we are using account 1 the actual transaction and over here again account 1 over here we have account 2 and uh, over here also is fine and over here also account 1 and account 2 is it clear now so this is again going to generate an error why because account 1 the private key of account 1 is now pointing towards account 
So if I run this code, see what happens. So error is raised. Yes, it, it was an expected error. Why? Because account one private key, we have utilized that. Now I'll change this one to account two and see what happens. That means now I'm signing the same transaction. You can still see that the sender is still the first account and not the second account. But I'm signing the transaction using the second transaction or second wallet, sorry. So run and let's see whether this time it works or not. Yes, it worked. That's why we are getting the transaction ID. No error. So now clear, Mujasir, or any confusion? Yeah. Uh, I have one question. Like, uh, yeah. this is like account one is pointing to account two. So the mm. private keys and the phrase key will change or it will be the same. The, uh, the signer address will only change. Uh, over here, signer address. This is you are signing using the account two's private key. Now I think you have you are confusing two things together. When you say mnemonic phrase, mnemonic phrase is a completely different story. Mnemonic phrase is used to generate key and uh, key value pair. That means your wallet address and your private key pair. But exactly which private key will be used to sign the next transaction is unknown to us while you, while transferring that. Right. That's why over here we are just saying private key. So it can be different for every transaction. That is by all means possible. So over here, what are we doing? We are keeping the account one, one or the first account as it is, but we are signing the transactions started by account one by using the account two private key. Uh, so, so how can I access account two? Like if one account two, two is yours only, no? No, no, uh, in the wallet. Yeah, over here, this is your account too. Account, you have created a second account no? from the mnemonic. So this is your account. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so let me type over here. It will give you a better clarity. So what can I, what, what is what we are doing? Because this is very interesting for everybody to understand. Let's say how the rekeying procedure works. Yes, me, the account two has its own private key. So over here, we have the first account. Uh, the, the font is visible, right? Yeah, yeah. Visible. So public key, it has public key and private key, right? Two keys are there. Now these private keys are generated using what? Mnemonics, right? The, the key phrase or whatever you are doing. The key, this mnemonic actually generating your public key, that is your wallet address. And the second one is your private key, that we all know that, sim, sim, uh, similar to your password. Now, this particular private key, I'll turn it to red. This is compromised now. So what can happen? Either you delete your, sorry. Either you delete your wallet address. Now, delete doesn't work. So basically, you lost the wallet address. Because you cannot recreate the same. Your private key is already compromised. So what you can do now, these are, this is regular for every other platform in the world. But Algorand comes to your rescue. Now what we can do is, because since you know that you are, you are in control of your mnemonic, create a second account. Right? And then what you are doing, assign or basically rekey the first wallet address using the second wallet address private key. Now clear, Mujasir? Yeah, yeah, now it's clear. Right? So what we are doing, we have stopped this private key being consumed by anyone. Instead of that, from that moment onwards, whenever you are trying to sign a transaction or whenever you are doing any transaction from the first account, you can use the key for the second from the second account. Now, normally this doesn't work. Why? Because this is a key value pair. That means you have to sign the transaction generating from this wallet address using the same private key. But over here, 
we are not allowing or we are migrating or we are doing a second step over there we are now are capable of writing or using the second wallet's private key for the transactions generated or started by Hostaker. And this is impeccable, guys. I have never seen this concept in any other platform. Right? So, uh, even if you have any questions, please write now. You can write in the chat. Udasi, it is clear to you or still any doubts on your side? Yeah, so I have one more question. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So basically, Reiki, when it works, like when I create an account or uh, I can do this uh, process after creating or uh, maybe if I get to know that my account is compromised, then uh, can I use that uh, feature? Or I have to do the Reiki process be, uh, like while creating the account, first account, basically. Uh, I, just a second, hold on. Venkat, I believe you are, you are, uh, your concept is a bit uh, different mnemonic is not as same as private key from mnemonic you can generate a private key for wallet and uh, wallet address and the private key so mnemonic is your master key while private key is used to sign the transactions right so don't uh, i mean i believe you are confused in that regard so mnemonic is a separate story altogether while private key and wallet address are separate stories so yes mudas yeah you can now go ahead with your question sorry I was reading that uh, question, so I could not uh, hear your question. Please go ahead. Yes, so I was asking like uh, if my account is uh, basically hack or something. So mm. uh, like the rekey process, when I can use this feature? Like uh, I have to rekey my wallet while creating the first account? No, or... no, 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 not while creating the wallet. Whenever you feel that your key is compromised, at that time only, you can utilize the rekey transaction. Because if you primarily do that, what will happen then every time you are supposed to use the second yes, exactly. wallet's yeah. private key. First account will be where the, uh, like there is no uh, work for the first account. But but imagine a situation, Mudasir, now you are doing account abstract, abstraction. Yes or no? Yes. Why? Because the first account is being signed by the second wallet's private key. That mm -hmm. means... The first wallet or the private key, the combination, you don't know that this particular private key is used to sign the transactions. So, sort of an account abstraction also works over here. Yes. yes. Right? So, that is the beauty of this entire thing that rekeying is a very, very nice concept. Right? It can save you a lot of efforts, a lot of things while working with, a, with an enterprise level solution. Right? Now, let us go back. And let us try to rekey back to our original account, right? So I'll go to my first code again, and then what? What we are? What am I doing? I'm generating the thing again, rekeying the transaction. Let's say, or we can utilize over there also. Let's see. We have already that code over here. So yeah. So now what we can do? Account one is fine. Account one is we are we are generating this particular thing. Yes, thank you, Mudasi, for <laughs> clarifying the topic in detail. So over here we have a rekey transaction, and again we know that we have commented all these lines. Why? Because this was not working. So now let us uncomment this line whether we are able to do this one or not. Let's see that. Now, we are using account 1. So, this is again going to generate an error close. But, this particular reeking transaction, what we are doing over here, in the first, if you remember, we were doing everything in terms of receiver and both were the same wallet addresses. So, we can have account 1 over here. But now, I am reeking back to the first account or first wallet address by using the account 1. But, I am going to sign the transaction using second wallet's private key. So now this should work. Why? Because anyways, this is we are reeking back to the first account. Again, we are we are expecting an error over here. And if something is correct over here, I can change to account one. So if our our change worked perfectly, then it will not give you any error, right? It will just print this one or it will just generate an error like last time. 
right so again guys this was an original rekey transaction over there we rekeyed the first account by or transported the first account private key to second wallet but now we are taking control or uh, we are taking the control back so again i am using the same rekey transaction but this time i am signing the transaction using second wallet's private key now let me save the code and let us run so you can see that it works that means our account is now back the control of our account is now back in our hands why because account 1 is now you are able to sign whatever transactions you want to sign using the first account's private key see we have signed this transaction and the transaction id is also registered with the first account's private key while the first transaction for rekeying back or i can say that i am doing the rekeying back and over here i am rekeying back to the first wallet address clear guys anybody any doubt meet any doubts cool mudassir yeah all clear all clear so now whenever you do that coding next time uh just remember this or add this step as you can say safeguard so if your user let's say you are creating a, a mobile application or you are creating a dapp where your users are interacting with your system and they feel that something or some weird transactions are happening in their account so you can add this feature to your dapp saying that like feeling unsafe or something or some sort of warning or something or they might report right to the dapp only and then automatically this particular thing asked to uh, per that particular user to create a second wallet and transfer the private key so that without you can say any sort of customer care center your particular users will feel safe why because now they can put an end to all these illegal or you can say uh, fraudulent transactions being uh, being conducted by compromisation of their or compromising the for uh, accounts private key and this is again guys saying that i keep kept on saying you will feel that i am i'm representing uh, the algorand foundation as an ambassador that's why i'm doing no because i'm like i since last 7 years i've been working in blockchain and i've never seen such a feature on any other platform right and that's why i i actually wanted to uh, add this topic today or to cover this topic today since our impact summit is also nearby and if you if you want to add this feature you can also add this feature right Okay, guys. Any questions from anyone? Since Mudassir and me, they don't have any other questions. So, yes, Rohit, I'll share the code also. Don't worry. So, Mohita, I believe that concludes my session for today. I know it's a bit early, but again, this was uh, the single topic. We don't have that any other time to cover the second topic, but. this is one of the by far one of the most important topics we have covered in these algo gyan sessions definitely but i will repeat that i said that at the beginning i said that to you i think yesterday or day before when we spoke and it's definitely one of the most important topics to delve in and to talk about and i thank you for presenting the session so wonderfully well i really love the interaction you have with mudassir uh, and mudassir is such a sport so i thank mudassir for that as well and uh, i mean if if nobody has any questions then we can definitely wrap it up because even i don't want you to you know start with the next but do you want to probably give us a sneak peek as i always ask uh you know into what the next session will be uh next session we are it's a surprise so okay. we are working <laughs> on that next part yeah uh, okay. because i don't want to ruin the surprise let's see if we can no, figure I out the next topic <laughs> <laughs> oh nice <laughs> nice maybe maybe mudassir i mean knowing mudassir and he's so good with his polls and keeping you know people engaged on the group we have 
um also on discord maybe mudasir can play a little game on what the next session can be you know maybe the other can <laughs> even even, I, even i don't know <laughs> <laughs> okay that, that is literally <laughs> surprise for me also <laughs> <laughs> okay that is cool that is cool um but uh, mudasir uh, could you also just put in links to your discord yeah sure to, so just um, a moment yeah to the algo bharat youtube channel um asunil's linkedin and twitter yours as well mudasir meet me also do that uh, you know so that our young devs can interact with you um and as we approach the impact summit i hope that everyone is really excited about being part of it it's what the third already and we are going to meet in just you know less than 4 weeks so i'm definitely looking forward to that to meeting of course all of you lovely ambassadors uh, you all are my friends and you know of course the 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 community at large and meeting our colleagues from algorand foundation so definitely looking forward to that um so as mudda sir drops the links um you know does anybody have any questions any any comments you know i'll uh, unmute you if you if you'd like that um just let me know uh, maybe in you know in a minute or two and if not then we can probably end the session have a lovely evening and uh, a great weekend ahead but i just give you know a minute or two for anyone to raise their hand or if you want me to unmute you and if you want to ask any questions it seems there are no question i you know when when that happens i honestly and truly believe that that's because you simplify and explain things the the concepts uh, the process you know so easy and i always i know i repeat myself here but i'm going to again repeat myself and say you know if if me coming from a not non tech background can understand it then i feel that you know the these are techies <laughs> you know right. are devs and i feel that of course you know if i can they definitely do a get you know everything that you're saying and i really hope that you know they um they are also practicing and following it uh you know on their own laptops and doing it while you know you are showcasing things and uh, for those present here i also hope that you know they are sharing uh the knowledge um you know via the recorded sessions that we put up on the link on our youtube channel that mudassir has put into uh you know our chat box here so i really really hope uh that you know everyone passes it on to their to their friends colleagues college mates you know to do that Uh, i think mudassir is yet to put that in no oh, he has so um he's shared the youtube link so if there are no questions and if nobody has anything to add or to say uh sunil let's wrap up the session yes yeah let's do so, that yeah thank you very much everyone for joining the session tonight have a great weekend ahead and let's hope to see you guys soon in the next algogan session the next friday thank you sir Thank you Sunil thank you everybody thanks Mudassir